Alrighty, any any more questions for this evening? All right, we've got uh So old man, what's going on? Hey Mike, what's happening? Not much, you doing all right? Oh yeah, we're doing all right. Um I got a couple of questions in regards to selling and also lending. Um how did the situation first time it ever happened to me? A buyer came in with a his mom. He was buying the property for his mom. The mom was the one actually buying, you know, purchasing the property and signing all the deeds. But he was the the person that was helping her. So throughout the whole process, I was always, always communicating with him. I never met or spoke with the mother up until she came in to sign. And when we were at the closing table, he asked me how much we were buying the property for. So he wanted to know what split we were keeping. And it, it took me by surprise that he would ask that question. It's a very odd question, and I've never been asked that before. But, and I, you know, I gave him my answer, um, and I think it was a proper answer. But I would like to know if that has ever happened to you, and how have you responded? Yeah, uh, it's happened to me, and the first thing I've asked is, are, are you not happy with the price? And they say, oh, no, 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 I'm happy with the price. Okay. You know, just re remember that you're happy with the price, and I'll say, well, I'm selling it to you for 80 and I bought it for 50 And if they start to get huffy and puffy and worried about that, I'll say, but you got to remember, I did, you know, I, I paid $30,000 a month in marketing. You know, this one house is only paying for my marketing this month. So, something along those lines, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, buyers, you know, they, they, they don't see that. What they see is, oh, this this guy is making a, let's say, a $10,000 profit off of me. Yeah, but that that's why, you know, and, and we do the same thing with our with our uh owner finance buyers. You just got to explain to them that, you know, hey man, I'm not I'm not doing this for charity and I know that you only want to pay me $2,000, but I can't find houses for $2,000. It costs me, you know, it costs me more than that. Or you can go the route of, you know, hey man, it's none of your business of what I paid for it. Well, typically um and actually, now that I think about it, somebody else asked me that question a couple of years ago, and I I kind of take it on the on the fun side. I tell them, oh, you know, this one I I stole it. I, I bought it for a dollar, and you know they start laughing at that point. And I'm like, no, no kidding. I bought it for one one dollar, one U.S. dollar. I'm telling you, I stole this thing. And and they kind of like they their mind doesn't. Hold on very quick. Like they they let go, they let go super easy. Um, but this guy was pretty insistent yeah. for some reason. Like he really wanted to know how much money we were making it. And the other question that he asked me is, how come you're selling it if you don't own it? So I had to explain to him that we were doing a double closing. And the more I explained to him, the more confused he got. Yeah, um, you know, I think I'm just to the point where I don't really care if people back out because I've always got other other people lined up. So I just, you know, I'll find out tell them, hey, here, here's what it cost me to find properties, and here's how much I'm going to make on it, and I got to make a living too. I'm not, I'm not in this business to to just barely scrape by. I'm in it to make a real living, and and this is what this property is worth. You and I are looking at the numbers. You've agreed that's what it's worth, and that's why you signed it up in the first place was because it was a good deal. So let's go through with it and get it knocked out. Yeah. The other question that I had uh, for you is, for your hard money loans, um, do you have a prepayment clause when you're when you're no. lending money to investors? No, we sure don't. You don't have a prepayment clause. No, you're no, because uh, we that, that's why we that's why we get all the points and everything up front in case someone pays off quickly. We okay. we just make sure we get it on every single one instead of you know just a couple of them. <laughs> Do you charge any prepayment penalties? No. So even if it's no, we like charge six months, you don't charge any prepayment penalties. No, you know you wanna you wanna. 
most of I would say 80% of our borrowers are are constant borrowers. They borrow on multiple properties, stuff like that. So I don't want to turn them off by having prepayment penalties. We do the points up front. Okay. So, you know, we'll, we'll, I think we charge three points up front. And those three points pay for our paperwork, but it, it's also just extra, you know. And that that's pretty much covers if, if they pay off early. Well, um, I, I am – I'm doing the loans uh, part of the business in a different way. Um, I have a lot of private investors that want to lend the money, but we're not taking it ourselves and wrapping it. What we're doing is we got the properties and we got the buyers and then we got the lenders, and we're having the lenders lend money on the property that our buyers are buying, and these buyers are investors. So we're more like a, a broker, kind of like the middleman, Uh we're not borrowing money to relend it again. Um, okay. Um, so, so, but but we're charging the points. We're charging the three percent, uh, you know, origination. So, we're giving the investors twelve percent, but they're not getting any points. And we explain to them, you know, this is this is our fee for for breaking this transaction. Um, so I guess in a, in, a, in a situation like that, that they're not getting the points, uh, do you recommend we put a prepayment penalty? I still wouldn't do it. I, I don't like prepayment, prepayment penalties. I don't advise people do them because I want to breed good borrowers. Um, you know, I don't want to push them off to the to the competition. So I never do them on any no, any loan I've ever done. I've never done a prepayment penalty. Okay. My next question is, what about um, extension of loans? Do you have any uh, rules for to extend the loan in case that the borrower needs more time to repay? Let's say they need another yeah, year. Yeah, so if they need if they need another year or, or or we need to renew, then we charge them three points. Okay. Are you getting a lot of uh, complaints for the three points or? They're pretty no, much uh, we let, sold on it. No, because we lay it all out up front, you know. Hey, if it takes you longer than a year, there's a three-point renewal, no ands, ifs, or buts. Now, on the renewal, let's say three points, do you charge that when the note matures on year one, or do you add it on to the interest on the loan? Uh, say, say that one more time. Yeah, so... On the renewal fee, the three point uh, three percent. Do you do you ask for it when the loan matures on month uh, month number thirteen, or do yes. you add it on? Yes, to we the, do. No, we don't. Just, you know, we'll add it on the no. note if they absolutely don't have it. But almost everybody pays it on on re-upping. You know, we get that we get that back when when they um, when they re-up. Is there a minimum amount of dollars that you land on? Yeah, it, it you know it really doesn't make it worth doing the paperwork and all that for anything under like sixty five thousand. Fifty five, you said. Yes. Fifty five thousand dollars is your minimum. Yeah, because I was. Yeah. You know, I, I, and I think I get what you're saying because I, I was doing the math on a deal that we're buying and reselling, and I wanted to do a loan on that, but. The, it was for twenty eight thousand dollars, and the monthly payments were only gonna be three fifty. And I'm thinking, you know, so, I, I don't know if it's worth it to to do this deal for only three hundred and fifty dollars a month. It's not because you gotta track it, and you gotta work it, and all that. And then on top of that, if you were to go repossess that home, you know how much profits really left back in it. You gotta pay all the attorney fees. You gotta do all the foreclosures, all that stuff. They, you know, they won't have paid for four or five months before you get the home back and then you got to turn around and try to resell it and make money on it again. And there's usually not a lot of room in those to make money. Yeah, I figured as much. So now what we're going to start doing is we're going to start having minimums for the um, amounts that uh, the the monthly income that we want to get from a property. Do you have minimums by any chance? Yeah, so, you know, even when I create my notes, um, 
you know, it costs money to run a business like we run. We're not a mom and pop shop where we're working for ourselves. You know, we got staff and everything. And so I don't want to go do an owner finance deal where I buy it for 10 and owner finance it for 20 and I make $75 a month. When it costs me, if they don't pay, it costs me the $75 a month just to send the letters and pay my pe- my staff to do the collections and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, do it, buy it for 10 and sell it for 20 doesn't make any sense for my my business. I'm not saying that doesn't make sense for other people's business. Other people made a great business out of that. But for me, I do have minimums. We want to net closer to $400 per property. I think we, we, we roughly net about 480 450 to 480 per property. Um, we don't want to, we don't want to do it for 70 and $80. It's not worth it to us. Hmm. Yeah, I can totally agree with that. Uh, is there any special clauses or any clauses that are, that is a must have when you're doing your promissory note? You know, that's a, that's a Shannon question, but I, I'm not sure on that. I'd have to check. Okay. And other than the security deed and the promissory note, what other documents do you use or do you need for, for lending purposes? Say that one more time. Other than the security deed and the promissory note, what other documents do you use or do you need for lending? We have we have a whole bunch of CYAs, you know, and all kinds of stuff, and it's all in, in Mitch's course. Everything's in there. Uh, and I, I can't remember. It's under. I'll find out and I'll send it to you because uh, I, I can't remember for sure. But we have a whole bunch of CYAs and some other stuff. Uh, CYAs. Uh, what? What are they? What does it stand for? Cover your butt. You know, we're disclosing everything. <laughs> we're saying that we're not responsible. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I gotta watch that class on the Mitch uh, program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Did I tell you what happened to me? No. I got thrown in Facebook jail for 30 days. Oh yeah. Yeah, apparently uh, somebody uh, somebody uh, reported me for advertising too hard. Oh yeah, we've been there, done that. <laughs> I'm like, is that even a thing? How do you how do you file a complaint for someone for advertising too hard? It's like, don't you have anything better to do with your life? <laughs> right. I know. Well, but guess what? This month so. we're gonna have a re- record sales month, so it's okay to be thrown in the Facebook jail from time to time for advertising it's too hard. It's all good, and right? Record sales month. Oh yeah. <laughs> I do is like you know, can, can I? I hope I can t- serve five years in jail in Facebook jail. Right. <laughs> if, if I keep having months like this one. <laughs> no, but it's all good. I, I don't know if you know, but we we bought an office um 15 minutes from from where my old office is, and I'm fixing it up. And you know, we're, I'll probably send you pictures so you can check out the new office. And with the proceeds from from the sales from this month. We pay for the entire office plus the repairs and then some some little bit that's, extra left. That's awesome, man. Yeah, and we're talking about like a really, really nice class B property and right on, on, on the on the main boulevard. Did you get a good uh did you get a good deal on it or, or, oh, oh man, or I was it just worth it. buying? No, I, I stole <laughs> it. I literally stole it. Like I, I, I bought it for such a great price. I felt bad when I closed on the on it. I'm like, you know, I feel, I feel like, I, I feel like what I'm doing here, it's gonna cost somebody their job. <laughs> well, just to give you an example, uh, they, they bought it's an 1,100 uh, square feet office on uh, on a second floor on a two story building that was built in '08. Okay, there's only 10 units in the building, and we're on the second floor center unit. Beautiful, go- I mean, gorgeous location. And they sold that unit a year after it was built in 09 for $319,000. Okay? We bought it 
for a hundred and fifteen thousand, and they gave me back three thousand dollars for my realtor fees. <laughs> so we, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> So technically speaking, we bought it for a hundred and twelve thousand dollars. That's excellent, man. You know, and it sold like ten years ago for three twenty. So yeah, I think we did pretty okay. And like I said, Good, luckily man. from the proceeds from this month we paid off the office entirely. Like this month covered the purchase of the office. That's excellent. So I, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled with that. Good, like, man. Everything about it. Like we, um, the the one thing that I I I did is I I, you know, I spare no expenses to fixing it up, because we're gonna be operating from that office for the next five, ten, fifteen years. So everything that needed to be done was done. Uh, brand new kitchen, new floors, new paint on the walls. Uh, new, like we did a little bit of small modifications to it, put a, a tampered glass right on the middle of the main office, uh, redo the conference room, brand new bathrooms. I mean, the whole thing, brand new everything. So, oh, and something funny happened. Our first contractor quit it in the middle of the project. Well, that that's no surprise. I mean, that happens all the time. <laughs> well, well, it, well, you probably have more experience with contractors than I have because I don't, I don't, I don't fix and flip. My my deal is strictly wholesaling. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, that, I was, that, that happens a that happens a lot, man. They they walk off, you know, and um, it doesn't happen a lot to us because we've had the same contractor now for years and years, and he's done a great job for us, but. It definitely happens. <laughs> I was shocked. I mean, I, I'm telling you, like, I, I don't even, I, I didn't even know that was possible. But this guy quit in the middle of the job, and I'm like, oh, heck, I guess I'm going to have to put my big boy's pants and find somebody else and finish the job. <laughs> so I did. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, man, like, honestly, everything is going well. I, I ha We have no complaints. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're ready for anything. So life is good. Good, man. Well, thanks for chiming in. I appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks for answering my questions. Take care. All right, man. Have a good one.